In 1968, social justice and cultural diversity issues were at a defining moment in our nation's history. In one year, we experienced the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy. Only two months later, the United States was responsible for the first space orbit around the moon. And E.H. Housing was born. A small dedicated group of ecumenical leaders in Marin County vowed to make a difference in their community. The climate was pretty terrible for affordable housing. There, were, there was no money available. The federal government had recently impounded all of uh, the existing money. A lot of community members realized that there was no affordable housing in Marin. Seniors couldn't stay in the area, and also young families could not stay in the area. When I first joined the company, I was one of about 12 people. And our office at that time was on 5th Street. We were uh, sharing uh, a auxiliary building with the church. We also got an invitation to go to Honolulu to save some buildings there, including a, a 32-story high-rise that's about 380 units, and ended up starting business in the Hawaiian Islands. One of the first bills that I passed when I was in the legislature was a bill to save about half of Kukui Gardens for affordable housing. And I appreciate the fact that their, their mission, their goal is to provide affordable housing for people in Hawaii. That we don't have enough organizations, enough people who are dedicated to that goal. I've known about EAH Housing uh, for many years. Two of their core values are passion and collaboration. And in my years of conversation with them and working with them, I've seen this displayed again and again. Their tremendous passion for affordable housing and for those who are in need, as well as their willingness to collaborate. They're good listeners and they're willing to do whatever it takes to bring everyone together to do good for those who are most vulnerable. Hi, my name is Felicia Ellis and I used to be a resident at Camellia Place in Dublin, California. I resided there for the past five years with my son, Darren. In 2010, that was just one of those years. You're laid off. Six months later, terrible car accident due to the hands of a drunk driver. I broke both my legs, my arm, my hand. Two weeks after that, finding out the property you're renting is in foreclosure. I did have to live at several different places. I lived with family, I lived in a motel. There were days I felt like I was a failure. It all goes to someone believing in me. And those people were professors, those people were people at my church, those people were that great place that we call EAH housing. If they can find a roof over their head that they can afford and they can keep, which isn't too easy nowadays, then they can deal with the other issues in their life, raising their children, finding other work, being able to go to work without commuting across you know, miles and bridges and everything else. Hawaii has a severe shortage of affordable housing. And uh, right now, the most particular need for affordable housing is rental housing. People cannot qualify for loans. The average home here is over a million dollars. We have a lot of homeless. Unfortunately, financing is a big issue. So we're only able to build maybe 400 units a year. San Pablo, we're going to provide 87 units of multifamily affordable housing. Uh, the project consists of a two-story parking garage, uh, four stories of wood framing above that. This is the entire courtyard area. There's going to be pavers here. There's going to be play equipment. Their focus on quality is, is very high. Um, they want to be good neighbors from day one, and a lot of that it means that you have, to, you have to have good architectural design to start with. There's no reason why affordable housing shouldn't be as attractive as any other kind of housing that's built. And that's something that EAH strives to do, and it's something that we, we strive to do as well. One of the things that EAH has been involved with uh, through their leadership team has also been advocacy in the public sector for additional housing subsidy that can help make housing affordable for people at the lowest economic levels. Through that advocacy work, we've seen a growing amount of subsidy coming into the affordable housing space that hopefully can make more and more high quality housing available for low income people.
community is, is it's not just the housing, it's kind of everything around it as well. And how do you give people who are living in affordable housing the best opportunity. So when we look at our new development, it's not just building housing. I think is, you know, the roof is just the beginning. It's how do we get those families or those seniors or those people with special needs best integrated into their community with services, is it transportation, is it job, is it education, is it financial literacy, is it health and wellness? How do you bring the full uh, gambit of services to meet a person's individual needs. Many of them are families and they have kids that go to school. Uh, if they do not have the same access as everybody else does in terms of internet and also in terms of computer devices, they would be in a disadvantage. They would not be in a competitive edge. So we try to actually close that gap of the digital divide. My first computer, my first printer ever, I bought it because of my scholarship. So I was thrilled because I was like, oh my god, like I've never owned a computer <laughs> or like a laptop. We have award 10 scholarships per year. My name is Shane Castillo. I'm uh, currently at Fresno Pacific University. I'm first generation uh, for college and high school. Nobody from my family has graduated from high school or college. They come from Mexico, you know, from like no education at all. And for like their oldest daughter to go to college and to pursue, you know, higher education, I think they feel pretty proud. Coming from a public housing project myself, you know, I know how valuable that is and a lot of these kids wouldn't have the opportunity to go on to college if not for the scholarships they receive from EAH. So I wanted to thank them personally. The growth has been substantial in the last 30 years. Now we're at about 110 properties that we manage and own. Two years ago, we expanded to Los Angeles, and we're now working on our third property there. It's exciting to see the network grow of partners that we have in government, in other developers, in other regions, in advocacy groups and how the whole network works together to build more affordable housing. Depending on, you know, what sort of deals we're working on, we could be, you know, meeting with local politicians, we could be meeting with architects, communities to discuss our upcoming developments, or we could be meeting with current residents to discuss uh, pending rehabilitation of some of our existing portfolio. One of the things that I've appreciated the most about the organization is the people themselves. And I found that everyone is very down to earth, very results based, and just wants to collaborate and get to a common goal. We are very, very pleased to be a partner with the AAH and uh, there's nothing we wouldn't do for them. You're gonna live as long as you're gonna be remembered and I believe the AAH is gonna be living and remembered for a long time. Affordable housing is real estate, but it's real estate with a heart. It's understanding the need to keep people living in the communities that they call home. Hi, my name is Barbara Sturt. I live here in Centertown in San Rafael. I live with a disability and I live in an accessible apartment complex. Rena is trained to tug, um, to pull open doors, to pull open drawers, to pull open refrigerators, and I have a daily helper. Uh, all these things help me live independently. I have grab bars in the bathroom, lower countertops, um, income-based rent, which all leads into a wonderful lifestyle. Well, now we're at over 470 people and managing 9,000 units and about to build our 8,000th unit of affordable housing, and it's all uh, beautiful and filled with residents who really are benefiting We've changed the lives of so many people in those 50 years, and we're gonna to continue to do that for another 50 years. You know, I'm so grateful I fell into this job. I can't believe I got this job 32 years ago. I am very grateful. I couldn't uh, live otherwise. I would be living in a car. <laughs> this has given me some hope. Man, you don't know how happy I am. This has put me in a position to where I can keep moving forward. My own place with my own name on it. I hope this continues. Um, 
I only wish more people could enjoy it. Happy birthday, EAH!